Hello, my name is Dewey Blevins. Welcome to Mysteries and Histories. In this episode here, what we're going to do is talk about shot number five and JFK assassination. As you've seen my other videos, and you'll see that I already did uh, videos on shots number one, two, three, and four, here's shot number five. Now, a lot of people don't understand that there was actually 13 shots fired that day, and I'm making videos on each one of them shots to show you photographic evidence to show you where these bullets made contact with. Uh, like I said, a lot of people just don't understand that there was actually a lot more to the story than what we've been told over the last 50 plus years is because of a lot of speculations, a lot of theories out there. And that's all we got was just theories on people saying, well, the shooter was here, the shooter was there, but there's no evidence to back it up. But actually it was always evidence in front of the public, as you see in my research, that a lot of evidence that I've uncovered, we found in images and films and everything else. And a lot of people overlooked all this stuff. So right here is shot number five. Now shot number five occurred just right after shot number four. And shot number four, shot number five was actually fired at the same time. But with the gunman in shelter number three taking a fatal headshot JFK, his shot made contact first because he was at close range then the other shot that came from the sixth floor Texas school repository, which is shot number five. There was only two shots that came from the sixth floor Texas school book repository. Now it's shot number one and this shot here is shot number five. Now we know for a fact that Oswald was in the sniper's nest at the time of the assassination. Not only by the evidence that was uncovered, like the bullet prints on, um, the fingerprints of Oswald's on the bullet casings, but we also have uh, palm prints, fingerprints, and the bag where he put it out right here and everything else. We know Oswald was in this location at the time. Plus, we also know the fact that this is how Oswald took his shots when he fired from the sixth floor of Texas School Book Repository. Now, this shot here struck JFK in the back of the head, but however, when we watch the film, okay, which I'm going to pull this frame up here, when we watch this Pruder film, okay, the back of JFK's head is rounded off. Even when he had the fatal headshot, you can see the back of his head still rounded off. But in frame 315 of this Pruder film, we see another disturbance to the back of JFK's head. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but see, like I said, when you watch films and you study films and you study reactions of the people and you study each frame individually and you watch the motion of each person like you watch the film you watch the distractions uh and the people you watch um how people are reacting just like jfk when he's sitting in his limo you can pinpoint when shots were made contact with him by the way he was reacting and also by the way the other people's reacting just like jackie kennedy okay now when we watch the pruder film this is frame 310 of this pruder film as you see you see JFK really slumped over just a little bit, but he's more or less like this. Okay. He's not like this no more. Okay. He's not upright no more. He's actually more turned over just a little bit as you see here. Cause we see more of his uh, right arm up in frame. And as you can see, he's tilted a little bit like this. Okay. Now when we watch this film, we go to this is frame 311, 312. Now we got 313, the fatal headshot. Now we see JFK being pushed off to his left now, not back into the left, but to his left. And as you see here, we watch uh, Kennedy, but we watch the back of his head now. What we want to do is watch the back of his head, even right here. See how it's rounded off, okay? Watch my cursor. See how it's still rounded off here? We got the explosion and JFK's head. And right here, it's already opened up, but see how his head's still rounded off right here? Now, when his head is hit again. I watch the reaction of his head. See his head? See how he's getting another reaction? Now remember, when we watch the head explosion, you see right here, okay? Exploded. He moved over to his left. But then he has another reaction where it's jumping his body as well. And not only do we see JFK reacting at this point, but we also see, also see Mrs. Kennedy reacting as well. So watch. See how she's right there like this? Now we watch her in these frames. See how she's sitting just like this? 
Even when JFK's head was shot in the right side and it opened up, she still was in this position right here. It wasn't until frame 315 when she made a reaction, okay, just like JFK. He was here, and when he got shot in frame 313, we see a reaction, but his head opening up. He's, his head's just moving to his left, but then frame three third, uh, 315, we see him start another reaction for something that struck, uh, something just struck the back of JFK's head. Watch. Right here. Now, you see Mrs. Kennedy? Watch Mrs. Kennedy now. See how she's looking right there? Then all of a sudden, frame 315, we got a disturbance in the back of JFK's head, and she's dropping her head now. She's actually dropping and pushing him off to the back now. Watch. See? See how she's ducking down now and pushing him off to the back? Because another bullet struck the back of JFK's head at this point. A lot of people don't know that, but we can see this by watching and studying and analyzing this prudent film, by watching emotions and the reactions and everything else. Other people in the limo and everything else, just like JFK. He's first like this, stooped over like this, and then all of a sudden he got shot in the left, I mean right side of his head, and his head kicks over, and then he gets shot again, and he comes forward a little bit because the shot just struck him in the back of the head. And then we have Mrs. Kennedy holding like this, and then when his head uh, exploded, all of a sudden she's still like this, and all of a sudden... When that shot occurred in the back of JFK's head again, you know, she pushes him off. Okay, she ducks down, which I'm going to pull up this image here. This is the image of the inside of JFK's scalp and skull. Okay, as I point out in my other video, as you see here, we have one bullet hole here. This was shot number two. And we have the bullet hole here, which was shot number four. And we have the entry wound right here. Now we have this other bullet hole right here that made this shot right here. Okay, this was shot number five. It struck JFK in the back of the head because we can see this in the Sapruder film that JFK was not only shot once on the right side of the temple, but also in the back of the head again. Okay, so actually JFK was shot in the head three times. First shot came from second floor of Texas school book. I mean, excuse me, the uh, first shot to the back of JFK's head came from the second floor of the county records building which shot JFK in the back of the head. The bullet entered 15 centimeters and stopped. Then shot number four was the second shot to JFK's head, but hit him on the right side of the temple. And when them bullets made contact, JFK's head opened up. Then when shot number five rang out, it struck the back of JFK's head. But as you see here, it's all opened up. So that bullet not struck the back of JFK's head, but it traveled through, traveled through that opening there. Okay, so see, like I said, there's a lot of things. If you start piecing together, you get more information from and everything else. Now, when we watch the film, and even when we watch the uh, Sapruder film and the Orville Nix film, we're going to watch the reactions now of the driver and the passenger in the front seat. Now watch this. I'm going to show you something. Something just struck the windshield, and now they're just going forward. See how they're ducking forward? Because something came from the back, struck that windshield, and they're sitting there ducking forward now. Okay, we see this in the Sapruder film. Not only do we see it in the Sapruder film, but we also see it in the Orville Nicks film as well. So watch these guys right here. Okay. Now we have the fatal headshot JFK. The shot just was fired from the window of the shelter, and JFK's head is now opening up. Now JFK was shot in the back of the head, as we see here. Now let's watch the reactions right here. And this is frame 28 of the Orville Nix film, because JFK was just shot in the back of the head now. Because now we're going to see Mrs. Kennedy start moving down from this direction, I mean from this angle. And we're going to see both of the driver and the passenger go forward, because something strikes that windshield. See how they're moving forward now? See how they're moving forward? How Mrs. Kennedy is pushing, uh, sorry about that, how she's pushing JFK off. See? The reactions. Reactions tell people a lot of things of what's going on at that time. Okay? A lot of people don't understand. That's why when I watch these films, I analyze these films, I study these films. Okay? I have to sit there and say, well, why are they reacting this way? Or why are they reacting that way? So after I've seen the reactions in the Orville Nix film and in the Spruder film, made me think of what happened at that point. Then I started searching some more. 
and then here I find my answers. Something struck the windshield, as we see in the Orville Nix film, as we see in the Spruder film. Something strikes the windshield right after that shot through the back of JFK's head in frame 315 of the Spruder film. So this tells me that that bullet that struck JFK in the back of the head went through that opening because it's all open up. Because remember, JFK's head's already opened up, and when that bullet struck JFK in the back of the head, that bullet had to go somewhere. So it went through that opening of JFK's head, went straight through, and struck right here, the inside of the windshield, which even in the reports, okay, which I'll pull up here, and as you see here, here is a close-up of that crack and that object stuck in there, which is a bullet fragment. The windshield was not penetrated by any bullet. A small residue of lead was found on the inside surface of the windshield. Small piece of lead was found on the inside surface of the windshield on the inside. So JFK is sitting here. Okay. You got governor, we've got the driver here, we got the passenger here, and we have JFK right here. So that bullet came in from the right and coming out to the left. So we can angle this by lining these shots back up, lining these holes and everything else back up, we see that this shot came actually from JFK's head. So the bullet came in, the back of JFK's head struck him, and then the bullet came through the opening there on his right side and struck the inside of the windshield. Okay, now a lot of people rumored after, like they said, a Parkland hospital they said a bullet hole and stuff like that in the windshield. There was no bullet hole. The hole became in that windshield after they took the residue out because here's that windshield and as you see when they took the windshield out it actually cracked more so not only it cracked more but they also now there is a hole there now because when they took that residue out and placed that in its own envelope it's going to make a hole in that windshield okay now a lot of people like I said when we look at this when we start piecing this together and everything else we know there was a shot, because if we look at all Jen's image number five, I mean number six, we can see there's no marks in the windshield or anything else. Even when we watch the Spruder film, here's frame 254, okay? So we know there was no shot that was struck the windshield whatsoever, because when we watch the Spruder film, okay, we don't see no marks or anything inside of the windshield at all, okay? Now, at this point, this is frame 254. If you watch my other videos, you'll see that JFK was already shot in the back, bullet X to his throat, struck the chrome in between the sun visors. He was also shot in the back of the head for the first time. And Governor Conley was first shot in the right side as he was looking out to his right. When this image, right, when this frame here was taken, because this is the image, it's the same thing that lines up with um, all Jen's image number six, okay? And as we see in all Jen's image number six, there was no bullet hole in JFK's windshield. And same thing here. In this frame here, there is no bullet in the windshield, and there's no bullet hole in the windshield frames after that until a certain point. After the fatal headshot to JFK, we have to look from there on. But when I line up the other film, we got all Jen's image number, um, the all Jen's image number seven now. If we look at this, okay, we will see that, hey, in all Jen's image number seven we can actually see a mark in the windshield now as you see right here there's a mark in that windshield right here okay that mark that's in the windshield lines up with this mark right here you see this coming down here that's this right here remember we're looking at two different angles now we're looking at the front angle which is here and we're looking at the back angle here. So what we gotta do is we gotta reverse this around and we see that this crack coming across here is right here. This crack right here is right here. We got another little crack coming up here. That's right up here. So see, these line up. I've already overlaid, the, overlaid these two as well. Just to make sure I reverse this image here and overlay it here and they both line up. So now in all gens image number seven, we have the mark inside the windshield, same as we see here of an image of the windshield after the fact, after the assassination. Now, here is frame 394 to Spruder film. This is when Alt Gen took this image here. Alt Gen number seven was taken by
by frame 394 of the Sapruder film. We can tell this and base this on the way the people are in their uh, positions that they are in and the way they're looking and everything else. We could tell this. So this is when all Jin took his image was by frame 394. Now 394 and frame all Jin's image 90, uh, I mean all Jin's image number seven shows there is that bullet hole, I mean a bullet fragment stuck inside of the windshield as we see here. We know there's a mark in the windshield now. Okay, that's frame three, uh, all Jin's image number seven. And that's the frame 394 when he took this image. So now we go from frame 394 back to frame uh, 314 of the Sprude film because we know from frame 314 on back to 133, there is no marks in the windshield whatsoever. So that shot here, or this bullet fragment stuck in the window, occurred anywhere from frame 314 to frame 394 of the Spruder film. But when we watch the film, like I pointed out, when we watch the Spruder film, okay, let me pull it up here. The reactions tell us when that shot hit the windshield by the reactions of the two guys in the front seat because they're going forward. That means a shot came in from the back, okay? We know this shot here, the JFK, to the right side of his temple. We know this for a fact now that it came from the shelter, which was on the left hand, I mean, right hand side of JFK. That shot came in from the right. It didn't come in from the back. The only way these guys are gonna react, as you see, even after this fatal headshot, they're not reacting too much. And they wasn't reacting to the other shots. It was not till something struck the windshield in the front seat, as we see here, something struck that windshield and they're moving forward. See how he's moving forward? The passenger, he's going straight up and the driver's going like this, ducking down right by that steering wheel, you know, because something occurred right here and something struck the windshield. And the only thing that could strike the windshield at this point was the shot that struck JFK in the back of the head in frame 315, as you see right here. Right here, the bullet strikes. Remember, JFK's left side of his head, I mean, right side of his head is already opened up. So that bullet's going to strike and it has nowhere else to go but go through that opening, then strike the windshield on the inside. And this shows us that the shot came in from the right and exiting out to the left again one more time because there's only two shots that came in from the left, I mean from the right and exit out to the left. That was shot number one and this shot here. And we know JFK was shot three times in the head by the autopsy images because we can see, as I point out here, we see a bullet hole mark on the inside of the scalp here. We see two holes in the back of JFK's skull right here, but we also see two bullet holes right here on the inside of JFK's scalp as well. So see, there's one, two, three shots to JFK's head. Shot number, this was shot number two to struck JFK in the back of the head. This was shot number three to struck JFK in the right side of the head. And this would be shot, I mean, shot number two to shot JFK in the right side of the head, excuse me, made contact with shot number one to the back of JFK's head. And then we have shot number three to the back of JFK's head again. So see, images tell us a lot. It gives us a lot of information. Just like I sit there and I point out, we know Oswald, by the evidence and the prints of uh, Oswald, we know Oswald was in this location. That's a fact. We know Oswald was in this location. We also know that Oswald owned guns as we see here in this backyard image here as well. We know he owned guns. Okay, we also know he ordered a gun, car, you know, a car can rifle, but that I put down as a decoy rifle. We know by the Dillard image that Oswald is looking out of the window from the sniper's nest. Okay, the bullet casings has Oswald's thumbprint on it, his right thumbprint, matter of fact. And then this is the way Oswald would be sitting if he, when he took them shots just like that, which basically would fit into this right here. He would sit down right here, place his right palm print right here. As he moves himself over to adjust himself, when he adjusts the box, he put his right fingerprint, index fingerprint on this side of the box, his palm print on this side of the box, the left-hand side, and push it over there so he can get that proper aim. So everything fits up and we get more detail when we put all this back together, we get more information so we know exactly what Oswald was doing at this time. Okay, now let's look at the view. As you see here, okay, 
any shots come from this location is coming from the right and exiting out to the left, as you see here. Just like if we look at this shot here, this will strike JFK in the back, exit his throat, and strike the chrome on the windshield. Because remember, we also got a downgrade. Okay, Elm Street is actually a downgrade. And then the further he goes down, the more of a downgrade is going to go. Then we see right here to where the bull, uh, where, excuse me, as you see here, the bullet will strike the back of JFK's head, go through the opening, and strike the inside of the windshield. Okay, like I said, when we piece all this together, we get more information. Now we know exactly what happened with shot number five. Now we know when we look at these images and stuff, when we compare these images, just like right here, I want to point this one up. Okay, we see a bullet hole here, and we see one right here. Okay, these are the shots right here that we're seeing inside JFK's head. Okay, so it's showing bullet holes in the back of JFK's head. Okay, we see two bullet holes in the back of JFK's head, and we see a bullet hole on the side as you see the autopsy images and everything else. Okay, now when we look at it this way, okay, we see that shot coming in, hit strikes the JF back of JFK's head. With his head being open, that bullet's going to travel through, and where's it going to hit? Right there in the windshield, as you see by this angle here. JFK in the back of the head, strike the inside of the windshield, right here. As we see in, in the images and the photographic evidence. Okay, just like right here. When he took this shot, now since we know when this shot occurred and where to make contact with, now we line it back up here, and at the time of the shot, the distance between JFK at this point and this point here was 268.17 feet or 89.39 yards. Okay, that's the distance that Oswald took this shot. Now, like I said, when I do my research stuff, what I'm going to do is I put the starting point, which is frame 133. This is the starting point of this Pruder film. This is where we're going to start at. And these are going to be locations of where these bullets make contact with. This is the bullet right here to make contact with the back of JFK's head. The bullet went through the opening of JFK's head, struck the inside of the windshield. Okay. Now, like I said, once we get all this information together, we start piecing it all together and stuff, we know what happened now. Okay. Here's the starting point. Oswald have 14.7 seconds to take this shot here from this point to this point. Now, we know he took his first shot at seven seconds. So he has six seconds in between the two shots that he took. He took him six seconds in between both shots. So he had time to reload and aim. There wasn't no three shots. There was two shots. And he has six seconds in between them two shots to take aim for this shot here. We knew Oswald was in the sixth floor tech school book depository. We could tell this. We know the angles from this here will be going in from right and exiting out to left. The same as we see on the two shots he took, especially this shot here. And we know there's a bullet fragment inside the windshield. And we know JFK was struck in the back of that here by the autopsy images and stuff and by the reactions we see in the people and uh, the films and images. So at this point here, Oswald had from this point to this point 14.07 of a second to take this shot here, shot number five. The distance from this shot that when he took it was 268.17 feet or 89.39 yards. This is shot number five, okay? There's a lot of evidence to show that this shot did occur. And this explains as well, because when we look at this, as I point out here, this is where JFK was shot in the back of the head. The bullet exited his head, the, uh, the opening of his head, and struck the inside of the windshield. As you see, it's coming in from the right and exiting out to the left, because JFK is on the right side of the car. The, the bullet inside the uh, windshield is actually on the left side of the limo. Okay, so when we piece this together, when we have all this information, we start piecing it together, and now we get that more information of what happened, what this, when this occurred or when that occurred. That's what I do when it comes to my research. And as you see in my other videos as well, when I do shot number one, shot number two, and shot number three, and shot number four, here's shot number five, it's based on photographic evidence. It's not based on a hearsay or night witness account or anything else. Like I said, if an eyewitness account verifies what we see in the films and images, then that'll be the truth. But if there's off that, if that story is off, then that story is really not what we're got to follow by. This is shot number five, as you see here. Don't forget to tell your friends about us. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget the subscribe button. 
you know, share this video with your other friends and relatives on social media. That's fine with me. Share my other videos as well on social media so everybody else will know this information. Shot number five struck Jeff K in the back of the head. The bullet exit the opening that was on the right side of JFK's head and struck the windshield on the inside of the limo. That's shot number five. Thank you. And like I said, don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, the description down below. You're going to find a site if you want to order my book, Evidence Conspiracy, which has this evidence in it and more. Thank you and have a pleasant, pleasant day.